Live from Waterford and Ungarvan, this is Waterford at One. Good afternoon, I'm Sinead O'Hearn. Today's top stories, a Waterford TD wants to know if transmission of coronavirus increases in certain climates. Plans are being drawn up to almost fully reopen the economy by the end of July. A member of the South East Substance Misuse Service believes we'll see an increase in people presenting with alcohol problems. And in sport, Waterford's Ken McGrath is not convinced that the Intercounty Championship should be run this year. The World Health Organization's special envoy says differentiating between the flu and coronavirus this winter will be difficult. Dr David Nabarro is appearing before the Dole's COVID committee. Waterford Independent TD Matt Shanahan wants to know if transmission increases in certain climates. In terms of of the influenza season, which will probably kick in any time from October on, have you any thoughts about uh, whether humidity increases the risk of, uh, I suppose, aerosolisation or of the pathogen remaining aerosolised for longer and whether that increases the risk of transmission. Dr Nabarro says droplets linger longer in colder, humid conditions. I do believe that in humid, cold contexts, the droplets that carry the COVID virus tend to linger longer and travel a little bit further in the air than in hot, dry environments. So I do agree, therefore, that there will be some potentiation of transmission during the winter and it will be additionally complicated because the flu is there at the same time and differentiating will be difficult. I would just repeat what I said before, that I don't think this is uh, seasonal. Plans are being drawn up to almost fully reopen the economy by the middle of July. Tisha Gleovradker has told the Dáil the early indications from phase two of the easing of lockdown measures are positive. Our political correspondent Sean Defoe reports. While saying it's too early to know the full impact of phase two plus, Tisha Gleovradker has said the signs are good for the coming months. The government is now conducting extensive work on the revised phase three and phase four of the roadmap so we can have the country almost fully opened by the middle of July. He said the plan is still one of trying to suppress the virus rather than mitigating it, but noted that Ireland can't cut itself off from the world and will need to reopen eventually and risk importing cases. Fianna Fáil leader Micheál Martin says protective measures need to be put in place first. The first is to do everything possible to reinforce appropriate behaviour. And the second is to be able to rapidly test, trace and isolate when symptoms emerge. Meanwhile, Dr David Nabarro, who's an envoy for the World Health Organisation, has left open the idea that the government could reduce social distancing guidelines from two to one metre, as many businesses have called for. Speaking at an Oireachtas committee this morning, he's noted that comes with a greater risk of infection and both the government and people observing it have to weigh up that risk. Sean Defoe, Leinster House. The number of positive COVID-19 cases in Waterford since the outbreak began remains at 154. There was one confirmed case at University Hospital Waterford as as of 8 o'clock last night. Ten patients were awaiting the results of testing. The number of contacts of people with COVID-19 has almost doubled since restrictions began to be eased. HSE figures show that the median number of contacts per diagnosis is now 3.5 as Casey O'Reardon reports. Inevitably, as we move Move around much more, we meet more people, and that can be already seen in the health service executive data. Senior government official Elizabeth Canavan outlining the increase in the number of close contacts of confirmed cases. When full restrictions were in place, the median number of close contacts was two. Restrictions slowly began to ease on May 18th, and now the median number of close contacts has climbed to three and a half. When contact tracing began in March, the average number of close contacts of a person diagnosed with the virus was 20. The government is urging people to keep their circle small. Those who can work from home are asked to continue to do so. If you have to travel to work or to shop, we're asking that you walk or cycle if you can and only use public transport if you absolutely need to do so. Casey O'Reardon at Government Buildings. A member of the Substan Misuse Service in the South East believes we'll see an increase in people presenting with alcohol problems in the coming months. It's after more than half of Irish people who responded to a global survey about drugs and alcohol use say they're drinking more since the COVID-19 restrictions were brought in. Here in Waterford, the service is based at St. Otterans Hospital and can be contacted on 051 848 John Lahey is the HSE Drug Education Officer in the South East. We can see it coming down the line because we're looking at the drinks industry, the sales and off licences have increased 
so that would be an indicator down the line that we would be seeing that, you know, people will be presenting with problems um, in that point of view. We're having, you know, we are getting a few phone calls. We're getting people concerned about their family member and that as well. Communions and confirmations won't go ahead in Waterford until September at the earliest, the Bishop of Waterford and Lismore, Alphonsus Cullinan, told Damien Tiernan on Data Today that parents will have to register on the Dawson website their intention for their child to make their first Holy Communion and confirmation. He says that due to current COVID-19 restrictions, the church will be able to accommodate small weddings from June 29th. However, the sacraments for school children will be later. We would be asking families to have patience and I know that there are so many children out there and I've got letters from them and from teachers and so on and emails wondering when is it going to happen so it's it certainly it is not going to be any time soon it's 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 probably I would say the earliest around September Former Debenham staff say they will not allow stock leave the stores until they're paid what they're owed. The workers say the company in the UK wants to take the clothes it hadn't sold in Ireland and move it to shops in Northern Ireland and the rest of the UK. Protests are taking place at stores in cities around the country today, but not in Waterford. Waterford shop sh- steward is Michelle Gavin. As you know, we did vote for industrial action. So each door, I suppose, will decide when it's beneficial for them to put on a full picket. At the moment, we're concentrating on the removal of stock. That's what we want to try and prevent, I suppose. And if that happens, uh, we'll put our full picket on then. A new parking incentive to encourage shoppers to stay longer in Waterford City has begun. All car parks in the city centre are operating a pay first, pay the first hour, get the second hour free until the end of July. The local authority, iPark and the Port of Waterford are all involved. Claire Hartley's communications officer with Waterford Council. All city centre parking in Waterford, operated by, I suppose, ourselves in Waterford Council and all of the the private operators will operate a pay for your first hour and get your second hour free in centre. It's designed really to encourage an increased footfall in the city centre and for people to come in and and spend that two hours in the city centre. Um, As I said, it's supported by all of the parking providers for on street and all pay and display car parks. It'll be available throughout June and July. 60 new jobs have been created in Kilkenny healthcare company UPMC say the jobs will come on stream over the next three years. They're establishing a technology operations centre at McDonough Junction. They say Kilkenny was chosen because of its proximity to other key UPM f- UPMC facilities, including hospitals, cancer centres and the outpatient sites in Waterford, Cork, Carlow and Kildare. Air Traffic Control at Waterford Airport say they haven't received reports of unusual activity in the skies of Waterford City yesterday. They were responding to claims that a very loud noise described as being like an explosion was heard by many people at around half ten last night. People took to social media to describe the incident. However, Waterford Gardaí say they didn't receive any reports from the public. Richard Flynn from Ferrybank describes what he heard. We were lying on the bed watching telly and all of a sudden we heard this massive, massive explosion sound. Undescribable as in it was so close it felt as if it was outside the door. We jumped out of the bed, had a look around, couldn't see anything, couldn't see any smoke, any flames, couldn't figure it out. So I put a status up on Facebook straight away to see if anybody else had heard it. And apparently it was heard all over the city and as far as three and a half miles away. Make the smart play with Virgin Media. Check out their smart home packages at Virgin Media, George's Street, Waterford. Sponsors of the Sports News on WLR. Starting with Gaelic Games, where the GAA have laid out their plan for a return to both club and inter-county fixtures. Club games can re- recommence from July 31st, with the inter-county calendar to pick up from October 17th. Speaking to WLR Sport, Waterford hurling great Ken McGrath's not convinced that the inter-county championship should be run this year. I'm happy enough club is back. Yeah. I think that's great. I don't think there's a need for inter-county hurling this year, to be honest with you. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know who's going to benefit, really. Uh, like if I was 33 or 32, 33 trying to play County Hurling and now I'm going to play in, in October, November, hmm. I'm going to look at it and say, will I, will I get the best out of myself then? Waterford's most decorated hurler says he's taken aback to be among the finalists of Waterford's greatest sporting hero, John Milan, who won five All-Stars, is among the list of 25 na- com- names compiled by a panel of experts. It's sponsored by Flavins and people can vote on WLORFM.com. John Milan spoke to Damien Tiernan on Daisha today. I'm privileged and, and delighted to be honoured and to be, to be mentioned in the, in the same breath as, as some of the sports people that 
um, are, are on the list. And look, if you told me back in 2001 when I first put on a, a Waterford jersey that, you know, I'd be involved or my name would be linked to a debate uh, with some of the greatest sports stars of all time that this county ever produced, I would have bitten the hand in the leg off it. So look, I'm, I'm very honoured and but a small bit taken back. In soccer, Spain's La Liga resumes tonight with a massive derby match. Arch rivals Sevilla and Real Betis clash behind closed doors. The match at 9pm ends a 13-week period without football in the country's top flight. And in racing, there's action today at Gorham Park. There's three maidens and five handicaps in an eight-race card behind closed doors, which is just underway. Sports news on WLOR is thanks to Virgin Media Waterford. WLOR asks you to stay safe by keeping your distance. Our next bulletin is at two.